if you're new hi my name is Senna so I'm very excited for today's video because it's going to be all about reading today and specifically reading about Palestinian history books by Palestinian authors and in the last vlog I actually showed the books that I was going to hopefully start reading today um which are these two books and I even have like my annotating tabs and all that stuff because I've been like taking notes highlighting and all that um I'm still reading this book um I have like a hundred ish pages left I think about a hundred pages so I want to read this first. I was trying to read as much as I could during the week so I can kind of finish this book off during this vlog. Um, but I just got really, really busy. Um, we also made ourselves coffee at home because we're still not supporting Starbucks. We're still boycotting companies that are supporting the genocide. And by the way, I'm filming this on the weekend of like Cyber Monday and we're also boycotting that because the only way that they're gonna change something and actually listen to us is unfortunately by affecting their pockets. So we have to keep up the momentum and we can't let it go. We can't let it go and oh my god, should I talk about this now or a little bit later? I kind of feel like I wanna talk about it now because I just recently was watching uh the movies okay let's you know what let's talk about it so i recently re-watched the hunger games and the parallels between what's happening now and those movies is just crazy to me like i'm just shocked um okay the fact that it was 75 years after the 75 years of like the oppression happening um, on the 76th year that's when like the uprising and everyone kind of like band together to actually make a change the fact that the the peacekeepers as they call them okay um does that remind you of any other particular group hmm the fact that they were using the like broadcasting systems to kind of like show one message when in reality it was something else and they wanted to kind of manipulate the people into thinking one thing versus like versus like the reality of the situation I hadn't seen anyone talk about it but then this one TikTok um, popped up on my for you page talking about like this one girl was talking about like I wonder how Jennifer Lawrence feels right now because she was the face of the revolution in the Hunger Games and just to see all the parallels that are happening in the movie versus real life and like how all of these people's homes were destroyed and bombed and all this stuff and that's literally happening right now in Gaza it was like what some people don't even recognize the fact that this four-day ceasefire is just so that way people can turn their attention from what's happening in Gaza right now and what's happening to the Palestinian people and just focus on all of the sales that are happening and buying more stuff because unfortunately a big part of this country a big part of what built this country is consumerism like I mentioned before, my mom has family there, and so her aunt was saying that everything that we see on social media is nothing compared to what it's actually like over there. And that's wild to me because I've seen some horrendous things on social media. I've seen some videos that are just heartbreaking, and I, I, but it's true. Seeing it in person is not the same as hearing about it and it's not the same as even watching it in videos because there's still this disconnect you know and again it reminds me of a part in the hunger games where i don't know i don't know what happened to katniss or whatever but um someone had suggested like let her go see district 12 you know like she needs to go see it 
and when she went it was like a completely different experience and it just filled her with so much rage because it's like you know you just take and t like the the capital just takes and takes and takes and they just want to use like fear as a, a tactic <sighs> man it's very difficult to kind of separate what I'm feeling on the inside with just acting like oh it's just another happy day and we're just living our lives and here's some more cozy and coziness it's just ugh, just kind of feels fake you know point of view I felt like some of the things that were said I found them really relatable um also sorry if there's background noise the windows open because I feel really stuffy but with that being said um I didn't really like and I don't I often have a problem with how Islam and Muslims are represented in media whether it's some of the books that are written movies TV shows all of those things I feel like a lot of the time when Islam specifically is being represented and is being showcased in the media it gives a very false narrative as to how we live life and the expectations of our lives and what's acceptable versus what's not acceptable so when i was reading this book and i'm trying to figure out a way to eloquently put my thoughts into sentences so that way i can be understood it's not that i believe that the situation and the scenarios of this book could not happen or don't happen because they do however I feel as though a lot of the times culture and religion are being used as if they're interchangeable when the representation a lot of the time is talking about Islam and um, Middle Easterners. So I don't like that aspect. I feel like it gives this wrong impression of Islam when in reality a lot of what happens in this book is based off of culture and really doesn't have anything to do with religion. That aspect of it wasn't um, 
favorable to me. I didn't I didn't like that. I don't like when Islam is represented in such a negative manner. You know, when you see these videos of what people are actually experiencing in Palestine right now, and their homes are being destroyed, their children are being killed, their families are being taken away, they're just, they're being oppressed and abused, and some of the first things that you hear them saying is them thanking God and asking for more patience, and you just see how fiercely they are holding on to Islam. That's how Islam is. I've seen a lot of posts of people saying like how they became Muslim, how they were shocked at the belief of Muslims, how in spite of everything that's happening, how loving and caring and calm and and just supportive they are of one another. And I just feel like that's the reality. So a lot of the time when you're reading things or watching things that are being represented from the perspective of like the Western culture, I just feel like it's not the reality of the situation. And I'm gonna end this off by saying that you're not really going to be able to understand other people's cultures through the Western world when that's not even their culture. You know what I mean? So, yeah. The next book that I'm gonna start is Minor Detail. And I believe this one talks more in depth about Palestine and about the history of Palestine. And, um, and I'm excited because I'm pretty sure I could finish this book today. It's really not long at all. How many pages is it? I think earlier I said it was under 100, but it's actually 105. 105 pages, which is not that big of a deal. But that's the next read. this is an experience watching it uh, through social media is an experience but just being there like I just I feel that it's so hard to genuinely imagine what these people have been going through all of these years and to grow up in a society and in a community and in a place where gunshots, bombings, rape, murder, all of those things in a way has been normalized in their lives, you know? And sometimes I feel like living in the Western society and especially having access to all of these movies and TV shows and just this content that's being 
you know, shoved down our throats. It feels as though we're just so disconnected, you know? You watch these movies that, you know, like The Hunger Games, where things are happening, where there's a lot of parallels to what's happening in the movie and in reality. And it's almost like we're, we're desensitized because you watch these things on TV and it's like, oh, it's fake. But then you see these posts on Instagram and videos and reels and TikToks and all that stuff and and it's like that's that that's really happening like that's real and also at the same time I just I feel like living in such luxury growing up with such luxuries also makes us feel so disconnected to the reality of so many people I've said this before and I just feel like it's so true that the way we live in America is not the way that most people live outside in other countries. The whole lifestyle, the whole concept, it's just, it's very different here than it is in almost every other place in the world. Let me read you some of these things. So the first half of the book talks about, like, the so-called Israeli army and you know, their experience capturing this girl and raping her and murdering her and all that stuff. And then the second part of the book talks about this woman who kind of becomes obsessed with the story and she's just talking about her experience and she's just, for example, she gets like really nervous so she gets she has a lot of anxiety she gets really nervous you know experiencing that I mean I don't know about you but if I had to experience normal aspects of my life where a soldier was constantly pointing a gun at me or yelling at me or you know I'm just like fearing for my life all the time um I would feel very anxious too the author writes by the way, I hope I didn't cause any awkwardness when I mentioned the incident with the soldier or the checkpoint or when I reveal that we are living under occupation here. Gunshots and military vehicle sirens and sometimes the sound of helicopters, warplanes, and shelling the subsequent, the subsequent wail of ambulances. Not only do these noises precede breaking news reports, but now they have to compete with compete with dogs barking too and the situation has been like this for such a long time that there aren't many people alive today who remember little details about what life was like before all this like the detail about wilting lettuce in an otherwise closed vegetable market for example then she talks about how she's trying to go to her job and there are soldiers standing in front of like the entrance to the building so She's like trying to get to her job and the soldier is pretty much looking at her and pretty much like low key telling her to find another way to get to her job. And so she says that, so the author says up until this point, I had not found the situation to be unusual or not so unusual that I should turn around and go back to my house. So I jumped over the walls and borders dividing the houses and buildings. And I do believe that jumping over borders is fully justifiable in a situation like this, is it not? Anyhow, I carried on in that fashion until I reached the back of the building where I work. And since only three of my colleagues had come to the office that morning, I got to work without anyone disturbing me, carrying out my responsibilities d diligently and very well until a colleague came into my office and opened the window without my permission. And when I protested, he said the glass would shatter if he did not do so. The army had informed the residents in the area that it was going to bomb one of the, neighbor the neighboring buildings. Uh, where three young men had barricaded themselves, which is exactly what happened a few minutes later. The author says there was nothing really unusual about the main details, and she's specifically talking about when the person, um, 25 years later, reads the, um, the article about that one girl that was raped and murdered. Um, so it happened 25 years prior on the exact day that she was born and she just found it very intriguing. Anyway, so 
She was reading the articles and she was saying that nothing specifically was unusual about the article. The author says, especially when compared with what happens daily in a place dominated by the roar of occupation and ceaseless killing. And bombing that building is just one example. Even rape. That doesn't only happen during war, but also in everyday life. Rape or murder or sometimes both. I've never been preoccupied with incidents like these before. But this is some people's reality. Some people actually live like this and experience things like this and they're traumatized and they're grieving and they just want to live in their own land and live peacefully and just be. The fact that their land is being taken, their culture is being taken, their food is being taken, their um, like anthem songs are being taken, their families are being taken, their homes are being taken. It's like you, you, you're trying to, it, it seems like what, what they're trying to do is genuinely strip these people of everything that belongs to them, everything that is them, and claim it as their own. One time I watched this TikTok video of, she's a book talker, and so she was introducing her parents on her platform, and her parents also really... Um, enjoyed reading as well. So in one of the videos where she was introducing her dad, her dad was talking about some of his favorite books of all time and pretty much all of them were about his people, about their experiences, about how they were displaced, about their struggles. Um, and he was getting really emotional and I didn't understand at that point you know it's like you know what's happening right like you know what happened already and you know you know the facts of something and it's like just to see him so broken down and so emotional i didn't understand reading about these hardships and these obstacles and these horrific events that happen to people to your people you know so to my people it's like you start to understand the emotion behind it and how triggering it is. Since this is my first reading vlog, I feel very proud of myself. We got through, we finished one book and I finished another. Um, I'm not going to start reading the other book that I have just yet. I think I'm going to potentially add that into another vlog. Um, which I don't even know what I'm going to do in that second, in the next vlog that I want to post. Obviously, I still want it to be centered around Palestine. Um, I'm just finding it really difficult to come up with content that feels cozy and feels authentic to myself without, you know, crossing the boundary of insensitivity. You know what I mean? I'm trying. If you guys have any ideas of videos you would like to see, um, let me know. Maybe I could do a Q&A or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is all new. But potentially in the next video, maybe we can start the, um, what is it? The Hundred Years War on Palestine book together and talk about that. Um, that book is actually the one that I'm the most excited about reading. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to click the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!